this is Darren McMoo here Studio and I'm doing a complete update to my July 2018 video on uh, advanced colour techniques. We're going to be using the superb Pound Sound colour template which is available for a very modest £1.99 which I believe in Brexit Britain is around about two and a half cents. And uh, I'll also be showing you how you can turn this into this with just the click of one button. Right, so the first thing to do is to download the color palette. Um, it's on the Pound Sound website. If you click on the link in the description below, you'll get straight to this page, but otherwise you can go through the shop and go to Cubase templates and just click on the link there. Um, add it to your cart, which I've done. And uh, what will happen next is that you'll get an email with a, uh, a link to the download which comes as a zip file and uh, inside the zip file you've got um, the instructions which is a, a little PDF um, telling you exactly what I'm telling you at the moment but uh, it's there if you need it and also the CPR file which we're going to open up in Cubase and um, just unpack it somewhere convenient I'll just stick it on the desktop for now and close that down and um, we'll just go into Cubase, um, open up the hub, and then we'll just open up that CPR file. So I know it's on my desktop. I'll just um, open that. And what will happen now is it'll ask you for a location for your project. Um, so I'm just going to put it um, in here in my project folders. It loads up, and there you go. Doesn't that look beautiful? So that's all of your wonderful colors for your template. Now this needs to be saved before it's actually going to be any use to you. So you'll want to go up into your um, color menu up here. Now if you don't see this drop down, then you might need to uh, right click here and select color menu. So now click on here. We'll go down to the setup colors section and all we have to do is literally save the current set as program defaults and click OK. And that means that now if we close this project and we open the hub and we'll just create a new project, all of our colors are in there. Now, what I should warn you about is that previously saved projects may not load these defaults in. So here, for instance, if I open up the hub, I've got a, a bl pretty blank project again. Um, but you'll notice that actually it was saved before I put the template in. So it's only got the original factory defaults. But don't worry, click on, on your color option again. Um, in the options, you can load program defaults. And now if you click OK, you've got all of your colors still in there. I should also say that in this setup colors section, this is where you could type in the names of your colors if you wanted to. So if you know that you always use this for bass guitar, you could actually put that in there and um, so on and so forth all the way down. You don't have to do them all, but obviously you, you might have certain ones that you want to select. So that's that. That's setting up your color template. Now we're going to move on to the trick that I showed you at the beginning. How do we auto color our tracks as we go along just pressing one button? Right, so anybody who's been following my videos recently will notice that I have these little extra codes at the end of my um, track uh, descriptions. So I put the name of whatever instrument is there, but I've also got these little codes. And that's what the um, Cubase program is looking for when it tries to auto color my tracks. Now I've produced a, a little sheet here that shows you all the codes that I'm using I'm going to leave you a link to this and also all the programming that I've done so that you can just drop it straight into Cubase and you could go into your color template straight away using this method um, but obviously what you could do is just use my ideas as a way to do your own generally speaking when I'm looking at a um, an orchestral section I go from the uh, darker colors for the, the larger or lower 
um, sections down to lighter colors for the solos and the high sections so you can see my code for woodwinds in general is ww and i've got woodwinds low woodwinds mid woodwinds high same with other things like the strings 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 low mid high solo effects i've got world instruments here i've i've programmed in basses guitars in my percussion section i have one that's a drum kit but the rest follows the sort of orchestral line there's still loads of colors left that you could use for different things um, so the way we're going to do this is we're going to go into the project menu project logical editor now this is where we're going to be able to program our little um, mini programs that check the names of the tracks and then apply the correct color according to the name. And the way you use the Project Logical Editor is you add a condition and a condition is just something you're checking for. So in our case it's the name um, contains something and it's going to contain one of these codes. So let's say that we uh, want it to be strings low. We'll put in str low. It's not case sensitive, but I just find that a neater way of, of typing this stuff. Now, once it finds one of these tracks that contains strings low, it needs to do something with it. And that's where you have your um, target operation. So we'll add that. And in our case, we're going to set the color to something and we're going to set it to a fixed value. And the color is going to be uh, strings low. So we just need to check our list and find out where our, where our strings are. And here we go, strings low. So I'll just click on that. And now every time um, we find something with strings low in it, it's going to set the color to that. We will, of course, need to save it. So we've got to store the preset. So we'll click on store and we could call it something like um, Color, we'll put the American version in, um, strings low. So now we've got a little program which is always looking for strings low. The next stage is to show you how you can actually just program this into a key command or a button on your controller or whatever so that you can just do it all from one switch. Right, so I covered macros in a previous video and that's exactly what we're going to use to be able to execute all of these little mini programs um, from the logical editor. So we need to go into key commands. We're going to um, show macros and we're going to create a new macro by clicking there and we're going to give it a logical name, color. And then we're going to add all of the little uh, programs that we, we just did in the Project Logical Editor. So going to Process Project Logical Editor, click on each of these ones and just add command. And you can see that it goes into the color macro. And you would just do this down your whole list until you get to right to the end. And I've done one before because I use this all the time. And you can see all of those commands in there. So once you've got all of your commands in, you need to assign it to a key. So we'll just click OK to save it, um, go back into the key commands, and we're going to look at macros. We'll use the color tracks one because that's the complete one. And then up here we can type in any key we like. We're going to use Y because that's not assigned to anything in Cubase, generally speaking. And then click on assign. And now that's OK. So we'll click OK there. And now if I press the Y key, that should color all my tracks. And there you go. All done automatically. And of course, every time you put a new track in, as long as you've used your little coding system at the end there, if you press the Y key, it will color that track for you. So that's how to do the auto coloring. I hope that's been interesting and useful. As I say, use the links below if you want to shortcut to um, my template, but feel free to uh, muck around with this as much as you like. And remember, as I said, you know, I've, I've actually named all of uh, the uh, colors that I actually want to use. When you load in um, the uh, template from Marcus at Pound Sound, it will just have the color, um, you know, color names in there. Uh, you don't have to name these to use this system. 
any questions obviously let me know and um, I'll see you on the next video